Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my E46 BMW and it's got a little problem with the DSC system. That stands for Dynamic Stability Control and that's basically the system that will activate the ABS for you um, on one particular wheel it, when it senses that you're losing traction. If you're kind of, you know, going too fast around a corner or your, your, and your wheel starts to slip, it'll apply the brake just on that one wheel in order to gain, regain traction for you. So when I'm driving along, um, there's a beep on the console and three lights go on the DSC light the ABS light and the brake light all three lights go on and stay on this signifies that there's an error with your DSC system and the most common errors are uh, the most the, by far the most common error is that you've got a wheel sensor uh, wheel speed sensor going bad because they do go bad and um, they're not very expensive to replace those and that's kind of a good thing to do after a certain amount of time and it's something I plan to do on this car but that's not what's causing the problem. It could be, you know, the second uh, possibility is actually that one of the pressure sensors on the brake cylinder, the brake master cylinder, um, goes bad. And these are what, this is what they look like. There are two pressure sensors on each, one pressure sensor on each circuit. And uh, according to the computer, one of them has gone bad. It says one out of two. I'm not sure if it means this one or this one. But when I get the, uh, the master cylinder disconnected and moved up so I can get at these, I'll test them with an ohm meter to see which one is uh, not comparing to these two that I also have. Um, I pulled this from a junkyard. So uh, I'll find which one's bad and replace it. And so that's what we're going to do in this video. And I'll also show you how I'm going to, uh, how I actually figure this out, what uh, computer software I used and all that stuff. Anyway, let's get started. So as you can see, the DSC light, the brake, and the ABS lights are on at the same time. This is the, the DSC light. Uh, this signifies that there is a problem with the DSC system. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the computer, see what it can tell us about this. So if you have an INPA cable and the INPA software, you can of course use that to read uh, errors from the, uh, from the memory of the various computer modules on the car. Um, but if you don't have that, you could also get this. This is BMW Scanner uh, 1.4. Okay, so I've got the uh, cable plugged into the OBD2 port, and this is the software. Just turn it on, hit continue. It scans the car, finds out all the modules you have. It's gonna pop up a little screen of information. There we go. And I'm just going to hit scan. And there are actually three pages of modules. You see, like, this is page one. We're on page one right now. Page two and three contain, I mean, there's, there are a lot of computer modules on a, on a uh, BMW. But we only need to scan, like, the first couple of modules because that's, that's where the error is. It's um, wherever the ABS module is. I'll find it in a second. Here. This is the fourth one down. So, I mean, at this point, I can pretty much stop it because I don't need to do everything. And over here, you see there are five errors in the anti-lock braking system module. Just double click on that. And see how it says pressure sensor, one out of two, not plausible. Oh, look at that. It also has wheel speed sensor, front, right, start recognition, view comparison. I'm not sure that that's actually a wheel speed sensor error. You'll see a lot of errors that are, you know, uh, it, it, it's kind of hard to interpret them. They don't necessarily mean that, you know, that something is actually bad or that a sensor is actually bad. So you got to be careful how you interpret it. But the control unit internal failure, that actually means that, you know, there's an internal failure in the DSC unit. And I'm not sure if that's also a problem as well as the pressure sensor or if that just comes up because the pressure sensor is bad so my plan here is to change the pressure sensor if i can find out which one is bad i'm going to change that one i've already gone ahead and removed the um the microfilter housing up here and i've removed the heat shield right here if you don't know how to do those things check out my common repair steps video i normally don't put those in videos uh just because you know, they're common and all that. Now, to do this, it, it, it's actually pretty simple. We're just gonna disconnect the master cylinder from the brake booster and 
maybe you can see this, but there are flexible lines. There are two flexible lines going to the hard lines on the master cylinder. This allows us to actually take the master cylinder and move it up and, and sort of pivot it back so that we can actually get access to it. Uh, the reason we need to do this is because the electronics box is over here on this side and it's actually obscuring things down here and I can't get a wrench down here in order to get at those, uh, those pressure sensors. So we just need to take it off and it's pretty simple. There are two 13s holding it to the master cylinder. Okay, there, I feel that it's sort of loose enough now. Okay, there's one, <clears throat> the other one's just down up here. We'll have to go the rest of the way by hand. Okay, I'm gonna use a magnet to make sure that the bolt doesn't drop. Eh, there we go. It was just loose enough. So now this can sort of just come away. I have to pull it all the way forward. Off the studs. There should be should be enough room, enough slack to sort of just pull it up. I know I've done this once before, back when my when I first started my channel. I guess that was over a year ago, but I've got vague memories of it. Looks like this is getting to the uh, level sensor getting too extended, so I'll just remove that. And yeah, I think I've, I've pretty much got access here. The, uh, I can just pull off the connectors. There's one, ooh, really hard to get number two. Let me pull this connector out, this uh, harness out, I should say. Maybe that will give us a little more room. Maybe I can pull this out further and get the, uh, cause right now the back of the master cylinder, the, the plunger is actually, is actually still the end of the piston is still inside of the hole where it goes, but maybe I can pull it out and tilt it up this way. Maybe I'll get better access. I'm not sure how far I need to go, but okay, good. So it looked like removing this was definitely necessary. That way it just had enough room to get out of there. And maybe if I kind of pivot this up a little more, yeah, I can just sort of tilt the line down a little. And now I have access. Yeah, there we go. So there's that second connector. I want to make sure that I don't get those mixed up. Although I, I think that'll be pretty hard to get them mixed up. So it's a three wire connector. And I honestly have no idea which pins to test. So Maybe it's a good idea to test the old one and see what uh, kind of readings we can get. All right. So I've got my own, my DVOM set up and I've got it set to read resistance. And you can see right here, there's a little sort of registration kind of uh, thing sticking out right here on the side of the sensor. That signifies pin one. I can actually read on the back wall that this is pin one and the middle is pin two. This side is pin three. So I'm just going to, Touch my leads to, uh, first of all, touch your leads together, make sure they're, they're working. Looks like I've got like 0.9 ohms of resistance on my leads. So they're good. So I'm gonna touch one and two. And you can see that it's got about 47.3 kilo ohms. And let me test one and three. There's nothing. And then two and three, nothing. So the reading is between one and two. So over here is my little thing. So that's one and that's two. So this one has, oh, where were we? We had it a second ago. This one has 45.6 kilo ohms. So around 45,000, 47,000 kilo ohms is what I'm looking for, I would say, if these are to be trusted, which they probably are. So I'm assuming I'm going to get that on one of these sensors and something wildly different on another one. So let's uh, 
change the setup and move over here. All right, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get, even get on the pins here, cause it's just at an awkward angle. And the problem is I don't wanna take it out and then read it, read this, the setting because it's just gonna be leaking brake fluid while I do that. So, um, yeah, just really difficult to do. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just unscrew them and uh, I'll just screw one of these in just to kind of prevent the thing from leaking. And then I'll just test that sensor. Or I'm gonna stuff some rags underneath it just to catch some of the dripping brake fluid. Brake fluid eats paint and I really don't want it to eat my paint if I can help it. It's a, uh, it's a 27 millimeter socket that you need or you could use like an adjustable wrench. I got the socket, I'm gonna use it. Okay, good. A lot of brake fluid wants to leak. So now that we have that out, I can freely test it. Hopefully this was the bad one. We'll try to get on pins one and two here. About 44,000 kilo ohms. So maybe this was the good one. And okay, so I'm gonna assume that those three readings of around 45,000, those are the good readings. And I'm gonna assume that the front one is basically the bad one. So I think I'll leave this one in here just for right now. I know which one is the old one that is supposedly good. And let me loosen this one too. Okay, that's loose. And we kind of bend this out of the way. Might have enough room now to get the socket on there. So yeah, okay. So let me get my rag like right under it because there was quite a bit that came out the last time. So we get this new one ready to go. Loosen the old one. New sensor in. Okay, so we got both the new sensors in or the new to me sensors. And I really, I'm hoping I get a different reading on this one because I want to know that this is absolutely bad. Hmm. Getting about 44.2 kilo ohms. So that's just no help at all. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the sensors will work and it's not actually an internal error in the DSC unit. The DSC unit is actually below here, down here. And in order to get that out, I totally have to drain all the brake fluid out. And you know, you definitely need INPA for that. You're gonna to need to activate the brake bleeding procedure, or I'm gonna to need to activate the brake bleeding procedure after I put new fluid in, if that is the way that I have to go. I did get a different DSC unit from a junkyard a little while ago. Um, I've had this problem for a little while now and I got it on like half off day. That's why I also got the new master cylinder just cause it was so cheap. It was like $8. So um, I got those two things at the same time, assuming that that DSC unit is working. And um, I am not sure, I'm, I'm sure that there's some coding that might, might be involved cause all of these units that have computers in them need to be coded to your specific car. So I'm really hoping I don't have to go that route, go down that route and uh, you know, so I'm just kind of crossing my fingers here. So I'm going to put this back in, get the bolts put back on, and I guess go for a test drive and see what we can see. So you know what? I should have just cleared these errors the first time I was here. It's kind of silly. But yeah, just hit clear errors. I might need to reconnect this thing. No, I don't have to. So now they are, see how it says fault currently not present. Everything's yellow now. They're, it's what they call the shadow errors. It kind of keeps... It keeps in memory the last errors that you had just in case, you know, a future technician needs to see or something like that. So, you know, now if you read errors again, nothing should be coming up red. So cool. We'll go ahead and go for a test drive and uh, hopefully this problem won't come back. Well, looks like uh, the control unit internal failure came back. So I didn't even have to go anywhere. I just kind of turned on the car and put my foot on the brake and the lights were already on. So uh, looks like this repair was a failure. looks like I'm gonna have to change the DSC unit. All right, I got me some instructions on recoding an ABS module. I think I found these on Bimmer World or Bimmerfest. 
and I've gotten this back to the point of uh, having the bolts off, having the, uh, the master cylinder loose. And now what I'm going to do is actually drain the brake fluid this time because I'm just going to take the whole master cylinder out of here, take the, the DSC unit out because I'm going to be replacing it with that one. So let's drain the brake fluid. Okay, so I've got a little container with a uh, plastic tube, plastic rubber, and up here is actually the bleed nipple. There's a little cover on it or should be a little cover on it. You just peel it off. It's a nine mil wrench. And I'm just going to put my tube onto the brake nipple, knock it loose, uh, let's stay. And I'm just going to let it drain. Probably going to use the brake pedal to, to pump that free. Actually, <laughs> I don't think I can now because, of course, I, uh, I took the uh, master cylinder bolts off. <laughs> so now I'm just going to have to let it gravity drain. But it's no big deal. It's just gonna take a few minutes longer. Okay guys, um, I've gone ahead and removed um, a couple more components uh, just to make some more room, make, just make it easier to kind of get a wrench in here and, and uh, crack these bolts loose. Um, I think I'm gonna actually, instead of disconnecting the lines from the side of the master cylinder, I'm gonna disconnect those lines, which they come around and right, they go right here and they go into the DSC module here. I'm gonna disconnect them from the DSC module because I have to do that anyway. So it looks like this one back here is a 12 and this one's an 11. And I can't really get, you know, I can't really get a 12 wrench back in there. It's, there's really no, there's no swing on that. So I'm going to use a crow's foot wrench to do this. I think maybe now it's time for a, a 12 wrench. Um, I, I drained all the fluid from the rest of the lines, by the way, because I just didn't want anything dripping out from here. Probably going to have some drips anyway, but I'm trying to minimize it. And I think got some paper towels here. I'm just going to stuff them down below here just to kind of catch any drips. This bolt doesn't want to turn freely I think because there's tension on it side to side. I think maybe yeah see if I just move this line a little. Okay so that's free and uh, yeah a little fluid kind of wants to leak out so I'll just kind of leave it there it's free and now this one is an 11. Okay, now that one's out. And that one's out. And we can just get this master cylinder right out of here. Oh, we gotta disconnect those pressure sensors because this line is blocking this one. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Let go. Yay. Okay, we're out. Okay guys, here's a, uh, a close up of the DSC module. I'm just gonna go ahead and see what I can get off. Let's see if anything's a 12. I think the rest of them are 11s. Yeah, you need an 11 millimeter wrench. It's probably like the one thing you're ever gonna need it for. <laughs> And yeah, I can see that the, the DSC unit basically it wants to just be like that. So mine's just a mine's just come up like this, but it, it normally wants to be like that. You should be able to get it off the way I'm getting it off. Okay, this one's coming easy. Yay. Okay, there's that line off. Okay, there's that one. And the last one.
Let's get this connector off. I think you gotta pull up on this. I think, yeah. You just pull up on that and it snaps, just pulls right off. Nice and easy. So, let me get these lines and kind of get them up and out of the way. Okay, out. So I, uh, I left this bracket um, in the junkyard um, from the new unit. I'm planning to just, you know, transplant my bracket over. I didn't know if they were gonna charge me extra for it. That's why I didn't take it. In case anybody's wondering, yes, they are the same part number. I knew which DSC unit I had. There are four different, or there are two, I believe there are three different kinds of DSC units. And you should be able to recognize yours. I mean, they, they look substantially different. The whole setup is just, is substantially different. On one year, they had it on the other side of the car and the other well on the other side there. So obviously that's not gonna be yours. So if, you, if you're getting a used unit, you, uh, you really need to know which one, what yours looks like. So I had a little bit of a thought, guys. Um, before I actually get to hooking anything up, why don't I go ahead and plug this in and uh, make sure that this thing is not coming up with internal fault as well. Because <laughs> uh, that would just suck, wouldn't it? I don't, I don't know what I would do about that. This is really <laughs> the only module I have for replacement, but, uh, okay. Already got the ABS module scanned. So can DME DDE engine torque not adjustable. P can chassis number wrong, ECU not initialized. That's because I haven't programmed it yet. Pressure sensor one and two faulty and the brake level. Okay, so there's no internal fault. We know that the pressure sensors are unplugged. The brake fluid level sensor is unplugged. So that's what's causing that. Yeah, so, okay, there's, as long as there's no internal fault, I guess I'm happy. All right, well, let's get this out of here because I got to put that bracket on it. All right, here we go. that it goes down there the two pegs go down and I believe this is the screw I had one of these I think I have two of them actually and you know it's got an imprint of the little plastic rubber or the little rubber boot on it and it kind of looks like it goes there so okay there and that's it cool so now this module is where it is supposed to be so I can bend my lines back Hopefully. <laughs> so it, it's really difficult to mess these up because these um, these nuts are actually larger than these these black ones. So the silver nuts are larger than the black nuts, and they're on opposite sides. So it's like you can't mix them up on one side, on uh, you know on either side, and then to actually move a line physically to the other side would just be like you know how the hell did you do that you know. So it's, you know, the, they've kind of given this some thought, which I like. You know those Germans, they, they pretty much think of everything. <laughs> Almost everything, anyway. My goal here is just to try to get these threaded in and started without cross-threading them. That is just the only thing you don't want to do. And it's... Uh, it's easier said than done because it's just a it's a weird angle and I can sort of feel some tension there so yeah so I can tell that those threads are caught all right so those threads are started Let's see if these are yeah I think these are too Let's see if we can get this one going 
Yeah, I think that's going good. Tug on it. Yeah, it's not coming out. So that one's threaded in. And now this one. Isn't that caught? Yeah, that's caught. Okay, so now I can just uh, spend some time getting these all the way in. And let's just make sure that the lines are sort of just bent back in place over here. Make sure that this is where it's supposed to be. Yeah, so it looks like they are. Here, let's go over here and do that. Okay. Looks good there. Just gonna tighten this sucker. Okay. Those feel like they're all good. I'm starting to round this one a little bit and I don't wanna do that. So, gotta be careful there. Just double checking these. i to make sure they're all tight. Okay. I'm confident with that. So I've ended up sort of bending these lines a little over the uh, few repairs I've done on this car. So I'm not entirely sure that this is the way all of this is supposed to bend. It's probably pretty close, but anyway, let's go ahead and get these pressure sensors hooked back in because now's the easiest time to do it. Okay. And this one here. All right. And now we play the wrestling game. I'm trying to get this thing back in where it's supposed to be. Sort of come this way. Yeah. All right, here we go. Pop that in like that, and uh, that's how those lines go, in there like that. <laughs> yeah, my uh, concern is just getting that nut on right there. I guess there's just uh, very little room to do it, so I think what I'll do is put this nut on now while I just have the ability to, because I can just pull that line out of the way. this one on. This one is going to be difficult, of course. Let's grab that uh, magnet. Just sort of uh, spin it on to the stud there. Get the threads caught. good and that one's good so we gotta spin this line on now okay so I did get this front one started actually okay now we need the ratchet So that's that one good. And uh, let's just finish up tightening, tightening this one up. All right, it feels tight. Okay, time to add some fluid. I've got uh, Pentacin.4 low viscosity fluid because that's what you're supposed to use for uh, this model of DSC unit. Basically, I think it's anything from 2002 and newer. And make sure when you're using brake fluid 
that you use a brand new sealed bottle of brake fluid. I just opened this right now. Brake fluid absorbs uh, moisture from the air and that uh, causes it to go acidic and uh, and causes it to go bad, causes it to lose its effectiveness. And uh, you know, when the, when the fluid heats up, the water, the, the moisture that's in the fluid can actually boil and you could lose brake power, you can lose brake effectiveness. So definitely just use brand new brake fluid each time and go slow. <laughs> I actually have another video on uh, brake pressure bleeding, which I'm going to link to right here, because um, you know it just it's it, it's a little bit involved. I think it's going to make this video just a little too long, so uh, I'm just going to refer you guys to that video in order to to properly bleed your system, and I'm going to proceed to do that right now, and then we will tackle the coating. Well, it looks like I uh, I lost audio when I just I just now programmed it and I ran through I was recording it and my audio wasn't working. So let's do it again. Hopefully, it'll just let me let me code the module again. Um, so what I did was uh, uh, first of all, uh, you guys should know that this is a Windows XP system, which is 32-bit. Um, my other computer is a Windows 7 64-bit system, and I couldn't get NCS Expert to run on it. It has to run on a 32-bit system, so just be aware of that. Um, anyway, the instructions say file, load profile, expert mode, okay. Then hit F1 for VIN ZCS. Hit F3 for ZCS FA, then choose E46. Now the instructions say to, ch to choose either IKE or EWS. Um, there is no IKE here, which is instrument cluster electronics. So e EWS did not work and I just chose the first one, AKMB. I don't actually know what that stands for. But I think all it's doing is it's sort of getting the VIN number and the information from like one of a set number of modules so that it, can, so that it knows what to program your, your new module with. So you do that and this worked and what you want to do is hit back which is F6 and now it says get coded and it has all these modules listed. We don't want all those modules, we just want one module out of that list. So you hit F4 and you choose MK60 which is the DSC unit. And hold on, I forgot what's next. Okay, you gotta make sure that it shows this job name, SG Coderian, however you pronounce that. Then hit F3 to execute job. Coding active, coding ended, and that's it. We're done. Okay, so now I've switched back to INPA and I'm gonna hit F3 for E46. I go down to the chassis and select my DSC unit. See how there are three different ones? ASC, DSC, DSC MK60, and DSC 5.7. I have the MK60, that's on the 2002 and later. Those other two versions I was talking about, those are what they are. I think the ASC is the earliest version and then came DSC and then Mark, or MK60. I don't know if that means Mark, but I'm gonna choose MK60. And I guess I'll do error memory. F1 read error memory. So I think these are the same things that I saw in BMW scanner earlier. And it's um, engine torque not adjustable, but that's no matching error symptom. So that's old pressure sensor two, no matching error. So that's old pressure sensor one, old brake fluid level. Yeah, we saw these earlier. So now this says VIN not initialized, execute LWS calibration. And that means that we need to calibrate the steering angle sensor. So apparently you, you do shift F4, or maybe not from this screen, let's go F10 for back. From this screen, from the DSC screen, do shift F4. Okay, so we're gonna do F1. And I know my steering wheel's in the straight ahead position. So initialization completed. Okay. I heard it click off and click on again. So I'm going to hit F10 to go back. And uh, F4. Let's clear the error memory F2. Okay. Now F1 to read it. And no, no more errors. Which I think is good. So I just did F10 to go back and then F10 again. 
and I'll go back into the E46, which is F3. This time I'm going to select the engine. For me, I'm the M54. I don't know what that message is about. Um, error memory is F4, and then F1. No errors found. So that's a good thing. Maybe this was successful. F10 to just exit. Okay, so let's check it out. Look at that. Yay. The DSC lights are not on. I'm going to hit the DSC button. That disables it. Excellent. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Awesome. Ooh, my brake pedal is uh, pretty squishy. I didn't finish um, bleeding it properly. Oops. <laughs> So that was actually a success. I'm actually really surprised by that. I, I, it wasn't looking hopeful there for a little while, but uh, yeah, I found the correct instructions on one of those message boards, either Bimmer Fest or Bimmer World, I'm not sure, but I'll throw a link in the description if you're curious about uh, seeing uh, that post in detail. Uh, hey, listen, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.